right, we're here. Hey, back in the barn, huh? Welcome back. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's good to be back, back in the barn and so forth. A couple things taking place aside at the barn. It looks good. But, uh, something I new should've... door. Looks awesome. Yeah, new door. New siding. Something I should have done a long time ago. No more painting the barn. So, God, that was a job every two years. <laughs> so, anyway. Well, speaking of every two years, it seems like the same subjects come up in firefighting every two years. <laughs> um, <laughs> really? And uh, right now, as far as I could tell, um, the initial attack line pre-connects for static. Uh, hose loads and folds are are back in the rotation for, you know, while we're in the season of Rona, we're trying to yeah. re-examine what we're doing. Um, when when you first started writing about pre-connects versus statics, that was somewhere for Fire Nuggets, right? Yes. Back in... Early 2000. I want to say 2003, maybe 2004. And then uh, you also penned an article for Fire Engineering regarding the initial attack line. Initial attack, closed lines, right. And that yeah. was in... 2007, I think. Okay. Yeah, so within a couple of years' time, I was hitting on pre-connect versus static, uh, flat loads and efficient hose loads all the way back then. So we're, so we're, we're talking, and of course, you know, when you write an article like that, for anybody, you obviously have some history in, you know, that subject area. You know, you, you know for somebody to just pick up and, and write about something that they really have no experience about, you know, that's a hard thing to do. But, you know, I think when somebody writes something, they've got some experience, some knowledge, and whatever. And of course, I come from a department, a major city. There's no pre-connected lines, and they're all flat loads, and they're all static. And the efficiency of those hose lines is phenomenal, as you've probably seen, and you know how it works out in the street. So, uh, well, for re for reference, people can go to the our, your website, the strategicfiretraining.com, and they can yeah. and they can read or download. Oh, yeah. Those articles there, right? Um, and uh, they're fair use, so get after it. Take yeah. a look at it and see where you're coming from. Uh, what's some of the major points that you, considering those articles and then everything you've done from then to now, what are some of the some of the points that people should consider when they're thinking about the initial attack line on your bread and butters or on a say a initial line on a commercial fire? What, what's the concerning thing for the firefighters out well, there? Well, first of all, I, I, think it, I think it goes back a lot further than before the fire happens, and especially what kind of a building it happens in. You've got to look at your community, and this is what a fire department needs to do. And I think this was done, I learned this from many, many years ago, and, when, when, and I'm going back to the 70s. You know, like when I first come into the job, you know, and of course you're new, you don't know what's going on, you're just excited and happy to be in a job like that. Right. You don't understand what it takes to set an engine up for fire attack. And uh, then when you get to the streets and they do have those fires, you're going to be operating in different kinds of buildings. Well, this is the whole thing about having your engine set up for the different types of scenarios that you're going to be confronted with. And fire departments that have a fair amount of experience or even a large amount of experience generally a lot of them have their engines set up to be you know battleships or whatever you want to call them and uh, their hose loads show that I remember uh, a former chief of the, of the yeah, Canton Ohio Fire Department you know wonderful guy I knew him because I grew up in Canton and he was telling me he was at a conference one time this is probably going back to the 70s or 80s you know talking with uh, this man and he was saying, he listened to an instructor or a presenter at a conference one time who says, I can walk into a fire department and tell if their fire department is set up for the parade or set up to fight fires. And that's something that stuck with me, you know? It's like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. So when you look at some fire departments who follow the NFPA standards and say they only need two pre-connected pre uh, hose loads of 400 feet of inch and a half or larger, it's like, well, they're throwing something at you that might make not be workable for your department in your hometown. 
And then you look at other places, my God, these engines are set up, you know, to be, you know, used at fires. And there's no glitz or glamour about them. This is the way it is, so forth. That's what those engines are bought for. So, so it's an interesting thing. Uh, like I said, you got to look at your department's resources. How many engines you got? How many guys you got on an engine? Uh, what kind of buildings you got? What kind of water supply system, system, uh, system do you have? One of the things I re recall when, when uh, my old department was getting LDH hose four inch, uh, was that they were only putting like six, six or seven lengths of four inch hose that were 100 feet. The others, the other three sections were a couple lengths of 25s and one of 50. And I thought, well, should we be carrying more? I mean, I'm just questioning. And no, it made sense because in the city where the hydrants are close together, so they are out in a suburban area or even a, a rural area where they have hydrants. No, we don't worry about those long stretches. In fact, you go to some intersections, you got two or three or four hydrants. You know, it's like, which one's the one you want to operate from? Which one's got the best water of those four? And that's the thing. So, you know, you're able that in that case to have your engine's hose bed set up to provide a lot of attack line if necessary. So, and you still got your uh, sufficient amount of LDH for that purpose. You see that a lot uh, where fire departments are really supply orientated. And I think it comes from as... Communities come up and grow. There's not a lot of fire activity, and they're going off what was tried and true in a very rural setting where you needed thousands of feet of supply and exactly. drop tanks and hard suctions and right. and never really graduated away from that. Now you're looking at you know farms that were not, are now plow down and now they're developments and there, there's a house every 40 yeah. feet right. that's 30 feet off the road and it's it's set up to where you could get away with less than Absolutely. a thousand feet of large diameter hose and a 750 gallon tank. And that's 90% of your fires right yeah, there. Exactly. You know, so, well, that's an interesting uh, thing to reevaluate. You know, you got to evaluate where you're working and right. it changes over, right. over the years. And one of the things also uh, in, in, in some of those areas that you're talking about, especially like your rural areas or your outlying suburban areas, you know, as you say, you know, they were worried about getting water to the fire and that was their main focus rather than getting the water on the engines in the tanks onto the fire, you know. Right. So consequently, you know, you had a, a zillion feet of LDH and only a few hundred feet of attack line, you know. So, you know, that's the thing about changing your firefighting. Again, evaluating your community, evaluating your, your uh, fire apparatus, evaluating your personnel, how many guys you got on an engine and stuff like that. To make this thing work because we've said it many years back it was decades ago let's put it that way so all this new stuff that's coming out you know oh we got to attack the fire bullshit we had that same mantra about attacking a fire aggressively decades ago back in the 1900s oh probably <laughs> oh probably yeah because that's what they talked about has the firefighting environment changed since then absolutely Remember the old term chemical lines, which was a booster line with the soda acid tank behind where the guys sit when they drive the engine down the street? Well, that changed to a booster line that came with water from the tank into the pump that way. Then we saw the fire service history go into inch and a half hose line because before that it was booster line or chemical line or two and a half, you know, feast or famine, right? one or the other. So as we say we've always been progressive minded and so forth. We've always watched and changed, made changes where, where necessary, especially in our engines. It's up to a local fire department to do that, you know? Yeah. And if you just leave your engines and your methods of fire attack where we go oh, pull up and oh my gosh, we gotta worry about this first rather than putting water in a fire, well, that's your department's culture. Right. And it's up to you to change that. Yeah. So, so this whole stuff about all this stuff coming out now about, you know, someone, someone's out there talking about, uh, oh, what is it, uh, attacking a fire quickly, quick water. You like, know, like give me a break. You're like, a little bit behind the time. You're supposed to, you know? supposed to do it slowly? Or? Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. So, <laughs> What was the mindset there? So, anyways, yeah. Get water quickly. Yeah, we've always talked about 90 seconds or less at an obvious working fire. We're talking about your your regular uh, daily 
routine type fires and structures, your one and two families or your small fires where you can start off with tank water right away. The engine arrives, your firefighters step out of the cab, they make an assessment, they got their turnout gear in their tank, uh, SCBA tank, ready to go, they get the line, get water to it. 90 seconds or less, that's not a hard thing to do. And it should be something that every fire department is trained to do, okay? Yeah. It should be an ex expectation rather it. than having yeah. somebody, especially, <laughs> Especially looking at some people's backgrounds about where they come from, about talk, talk and like that. You know, it's like, well, okay, fine. Yeah. This is something that many fire departments have already done, already practiced. So, all right, yeah, all right, we'll move on. But uh, yeah, again, for folks that are uh, tuning in or unaware, go to the Strategic Fire Training website. Take a flip through the uh, resource page and uh, check out. The Book of Shoop and these articles that he's referencing from uh, 17 plus years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're all there. Yeah. So uh, take a look and uh, enjoy some of the experience-based stuff that Jeff has written out there for you. And some of the stuff, don't forget, there, there's there's a lot of other guys who are out there, you know, also. You know, again, you know, let's not forget Andy's work, you know, and all that he put out there, too. Right. Know? So... Well, you said, like, you use your inspiration to put pen to paper. Yeah, really, you know? So, keep that stuff alive, too. That's it. Yeah. All right.